All right, I've, uh, I've got a project coming up where I'm gonna have some uh, pretty long parts, about five feet. Um, it's gonna be pretty critical that the, the bend is spot on. So I figured uh, now was a good time to go ahead and uh, make some changes to the control system on this. Um, I pulled off This was the old adjuster. Um, this was a, um, a part that came with my plasma table that adjusts the head of the plasma. Um, they actually sent me two of these. Um, and it's a pretty cool unit. I wish I had a name on it um, for who made it because um, it's, it's a nice quality setup. Um, but I took it off because it's not gonna work now for what I need. So as I've mentioned before in my videos, that, that old adjuster was mounted behind the RAM and had one micro switch basically in the center. Um, in my last video, I kind of described how I was going to set this up. Um, but basically, well, I built this new adjuster that's pretty beefy. Um, really hard to see now that it's in there but this piece of um, two and a half by half cold roll flat bar that's what moves up and down and it rides on bearings there's a ball bearing there's four of them two here and then the other two up here um, and I preloaded these pretty tight um, there is no movement in this it's actually got um, a little bit of drag it's actually I had to keep playing with the size of these tie bars um, to get the fit really tight. Um, and it's just a real simple setup. I made a crank handle. It just uses uh, 3 8 by 16 all thread. And then uh, just a coupler nut. This isn't, you know, it's not like this is a lead screw for a machine or something. Um, I feel like this will hold up pretty good. And then if this ever wears out, I can cut these two little welds and change this. Um, so bolted to the cold rolled flat bar is this piece with these kind of like four wings on it. And then, uh, so this piece moves up and down with the adjuster. And then bolted to there are some um, half one inch by half inch flat bar. These two pieces on top that are level. And then these lower pieces are basically braces just to keep them from sagging or having any deflection. And so what that does is it comes all the way out. Um, I got lucky with my design that I had just enough space in here for this new adjuster arm to fit through that window. And so what I'm gonna do is weld this little coupler nut with this long set screw. It's gonna weld to the back. So I'll have some fine tuning as far as a uh, level. And then those guys will engage these micro switches. And so this will be mounted to the frame. There'll be a bracket that comes off and holds these switches. And then I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of rewiring, but basically each one of these um, pneumatic jacks um, will have, it's actually gonna be simpler than it is now. It's, it's basically power will come into um, the foot pedal switch down there. It'll travel through to this switch and then in series will be one of these switches and the synchronizer arm I made. Um, so that either way, if this jack comes down and is outrunning this side, it'll trip this switch and then let this ram catch up, which will recenter the synchronizer. And then also, and then, you know, so it'll go foot pedal, 
this switch, that switch, and then to ground. So there'll basically be two switches in series and either it'll hit the limit or it'll, the synchronizer will shut the one side off. And so basically this adjuster will stay level with the, with the top ram. And so, you know, there, this isn't perfectly, uh, I've got this adjusted to where it's been working pretty good lately, but there's still a little bit of, um, I don't know, backlash or whatever you want to call it. I mean, none of these joints are perfectly tight. You know, I, I did the best I could. It's got um, nice little tight hind joints in the linkages and, but still everything's got a little give to it. But I think this will basically keep it close. And then as it reaches its ultimate limit, if, uh, you know, let's say this side's running faster for whatever reason, because there's less force or just because the two jacks aren't perfect, um, it'll hit its limit switch first. So this ram will come down, say it's crooked, stop, and then the other side will keep going until it hits its point. Um, again, it's not a perfect system, but it's, uh, it's cheap. <laughs> and hopefully this time will be, will be reliable. Um, again, I know a lot of people tell me I just need to put real hydraulics on it, but that's thousands of dollars. And, uh, you know, I'm slowly collecting pieces to do that. Um, but all that stuff's really expensive in comparison. Um, so that's where I'm at. I gotta, now that I've got this mounted, um, I've got to get some uh, other hardware, but um, I'm going to start mocking up and figure out where I want to put this switch. Um, ideally, I, I think I'm going to do a temporary bracket just off of the frame to hold the switch. Um, but what my goal is eventually is to actually build a bracket that comes down, circles this uh, notch in the frame, and comes in and attaches to the lower bed. Because this, this C, I gave it too much throat depth. Um, it's got 15 inches of throat depth. Um, and there's about 18 inches of steel basically here. But this C, under a big load, does spread open a little bit. And so that does give a little inconsistency as well. Um, it's not a lot. I've put a dial indicator between these, these ways. And I mean, I didn't stall out the pumps, but it was working pretty hard and it, it opened up um, 20 thousandths, which isn't a lot, but it's enough to throw your bend angle off by a good couple of degrees. And so I'm gonna start with this, a little simple bracket and see how the machine runs. And if it still gives me grief, um, I'll, I'll cut those off and build a new piece that goes all the way around. Um, the reason I'm not doing it right now, I don't have the material laying around. Um, I have to cut this box off and move it because it's in the way. So I'm just gonna start with the easy part first and kind of get this system dialed in. And then, and then I'll change that mounting position if needed. So I'm pretty excited about this. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this works good. Um, I put this, I put the, um, this all rides on bushings. And I got them preloaded. It's pretty snug. There's no backlash. Um, you know, obviously in regular threads and that lead screw and that coupler nut, there's a tiny bit, but luckily, you know, there's, there's a lot of weight on, on all these arms. And so it's going to want to fall to the bottom and the only loads on those arms are just what it takes to click this, which is like, you know, an ounce or something. So I think just the weight alone will click these and not even put any stress, not even put any stress on the, uh, that adjuster. So that's where I'm at. Um, again, hopefully this works. Uh, the next project after that, uh, this was done pretty quickly and very cheaply. Um, this is the pivot. So basically these rockers um, are welded to this four inch quarter wall pipe. And then inside the frame is a piece that this fits into. So it's metal to metal. I do have grease circs in there and I keep it greased. 
but um, it was never perfectly tight to begin with. Um, there is a little bit of play here too, maybe a 32nd of an inch. Um, so that's something I'm gonna be doing soon too, is, is cutting this all out. And uh, I've made some parts to basically fill these holes and I've got some um, real heavy wall tubing. And then I'm working on making some um, like bronze bushings. And then there'll be an inch and a half diameter grade eight bolt that'll go through all of it. Um, and I'm gonna build that all really, you know, tight. And hopefully the, that eliminates some of my, some of my slop. But you know, I'm uh, kind of striving for perfection with this thing. And honestly, um, since I've been fiddling with that synchronizer, it's actually been working pretty darn good lately. But um, you know, I'm working on building uh, bumper kits for these Suzuki Samurais. And I just got done with the prototype rear bumper. And this one was built with all separate pieces. So all these, all these long seams, you know, were welded 100% and then ground. And I want to build it, you know, the new, the next, the next one I build, the top, the face and the bottom, it's all going to be one piece and it'll be bent. Um, so it'll mostly be just the side caps um, and the internal brackets for the lighting that'll be welded. But all the main exterior piece will all be um, one nice bent piece. So that'll, uh, you know, one, it'll, it'll greatly speed up building these and it'll be a, a nicer looking product. And, you know, with that much weld on that narrow of a part, you know, I was, uh, had to be really careful with distortion. So that's uh, kind of my driving reason right now for working on this press brake. Um, Cause I'm going to be selling uh these bumpers and some other parts. Um, the front bumper is made in a lot, you know, the bend is only 18 inches or whatever. There's like kind of three segments the way this is built. So it's not nearly as big of a deal, but so I'm gonna, I gotta get some hardware. And, uh, you know, I got to get some more, uh, I didn't have the right size bolts laying around. This is where this whole unit bolts in. So I got to get new bolts, get that all bolted in solid and then, uh, weld the brace to this piece. Get that all solid. And then I'll start building the, uh, the switch mounts and the adjusters. Anyway, if this thing's, uh, interesting to you, uh, I'll keep posting videos of the upgrades I do. Um, hopefully that's it for a while. Um, this thing works pretty good. One thing that would be nice, and it's something I may or may not do, it'd be nice to put some of the um, like cheap, uh, like a digital readout slides uh, on, the, on the backstops. Because right now I just have to basically measure and I've got a technique that works. It gets it pretty, pretty consistent and pretty, uh, pretty accurate. But it's kind of slow. And doing parts with multiple bins would be cool to be able to just, you know, move those quickly and watch the readout and, and then clamp it down. So that might be down the road, but we'll see. Again, I don't, I don't use this thing every single day. So it's not a, uh, it's not something I want to put a pile of money into, but little bits here and there. So that's it for today. Um, I'll do another, uh, I'll do another quick video when it's all finished here in the next day or two. Thanks for watching.